go. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Particles, Plants and Patients podcast with me, Elliot Griffiths, who works for the NHS and lives in Manchester. We're also here with Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm an engineer. And Tesney. Hi, I'm Tesney. I run my own plant shop here in North Wales. And today we are going to be talking about the interesting topic of historical medicine. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) So this was my topic that I sort of came up with. um, So I hope it doesn't disappoint. But as we know, history's not been kind to the medical world and um, some of some of the original uh, operations and uh, things were quite disgusting and I don't think they were great for people but we've got a collection of facts for them today. Um, A little bit dramatic. (laughs) Yeah so um, I don't know about any of you listening at home but I'm definitely feeling um, bigger after Christmas (laughs) and um, dieting is on my agenda. However one thing that um, I hadn't considered is that you can actually use tapeworms and they were prescribed by doctors uh, in the past to mostly women according to my source uh, they were given tapeworm eggs to swallow and then um, they would lose weight because that tapeworm would eat most of their food for them that's horrific like isn't that just awful what Ridiculous. a first fuck <laughs> <laughs> not yep. gonna ease us in today <laughs> yeah for that tapeworm me <laughs> so i looked straight at that one and thought that's the one today that's the first one we need to be doing and discussing. I feel like it, it, when was this? Yeah. It was like the 1800s hmm. when this was going on. Of um, course. And, well, as you know, with fashion back then, using lead and everything, I think people just saw um, tapeworms and thought, wow, that makes you thin. Let's give that a go. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, it, yeah, and, I mean, it technically did work, but it's mm. not a good thing to do. Um, no. If anybody's had a tapeworm at home, as you know, they do make you thinner. <laughs> <laughs> But although we do not, <laughs> we oh my do not. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> although Where we can't are you going condone that, that. <laughs> <laughs> don't go out eating um, eating See? tapeworms, please. Yeah, the only thing I think about when you think of a tapeworm is just the US office. Kelly, do you remember Rachel when you watched that? I don't know if you did watch that episode, mm-hmm. but Kelly ate a tapeworm just to get thin. Yeah, like <laughs> that's. Well. All- Maybe she learned this from 1800s medicine. (laughs) It actually ended up just being a worm. Tapeworms and worms are very different, everyone. (laughs) Don't just go around and eating earthworms. Don't go around eating any worms. Any worm, don't (laughs) eat. (laughs) Please don't eat things off the ground or in the ground. (laughs) Well, bugs and veg. You can eat bugs. Yeah, some veg you can eat. But But yeah, yeah, I just think that's very dramatic and very um, disgusting, like... I don't think I'd be too pleased if they're like take two tapeworms daily or whatever. But um, no, was it not just like one tapeworm and just sorted out the issue? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think like you. My would research eat a didn't take me that far. <laughs> tapeworm I think you'd, a day. <laughs> yeah, I think you would just like eat a tapeworm and then like it just eat all Grow, your food. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't think you'd eat multiple. Otherwise, I think you would definitely die very fast. Yeah. I would. Uh, you know, like when you got to your like optimum weight and you're like, I'm happy here. How did you get rid of it? I don't. I wonder how that happened. I think I've actually <laughs> looked into this before. Where then there's something you can take to then pass the tapeworm. I think you you definitely have to make the environment it lives in quite hostile. So maybe drinking salt water. I don't know. Yeah, something. Well, there's oh, medicines no. that exist anyway for people yeah. that like have. Food. I was thinking more of the 1800s. To be fair. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is true. They probably <laughs> didn't have what we have now. No. Yeah, they probably had some sort of terrifying machine that's it's extracted. Pro- them. It's probably something ridiculous like cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, once you got too perfect weight, they just killed you. <laughs> I was reading a thing about this actually. I, I haven't written this one down. This is just from what I remember. And there was a weight loss tablet, and I think it was in the 80s and 90s, that was was really great. um, They, in quotation marks, uh, (laughs) because they'd found that it was really effective at doing what it did. You could lose, it it increased your metabolism, that's what it was trying to do. And they were finding people that could lose like 30 pounds or something on this quite quickly. You know, this is great. They did a a study and they proved there was no ill side effects except of course with all these medical studies it wasn't done properly and they used a very small amount of people in a very small amount of time and so the the um medical board that regulated it were like yeah this is fine we will give a year we'll let it go into the public for a year and see what happens and if anything you know comes out from it being in the public for a year 
will then recall it and they gave it to people and like within months people were having to be hospitalized because they didn't realize they were increasing the metabolism but it was putting so much stress on the people's hearts that they start all started getting heart failure from these oh weight loss God. tablets because it was causing them to like it was just causing their bodies to basically overload and they were burning calories at such a rate but it was because their heart was going like non-stop at least um, they were thin though yeah, yeah. but you know well uh- I think the one takeaway we've got here is there's not really much point in dieting because it'll probably kill you. (laughs) Just diet, but in the sensible ways of Mm -hmm. exercise and reduce calories Mm -hmm. to a right way. A reasonable amount. Turn into an advice. Reasonable amount, yeah. (laughs) Well, no. (laughs) Losing weight is obviously a good thing if you know for some people. So yeah, that's all I had to say about that. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to end go any more on that. I have. Um, some, do you want? No, you go. No, no, go, go, go. Okay. Go. So I have a fact that uh, I actually found out Tesney had also picked that I really <laughs> liked, um, and this is there's one there's some that are quite famous in this, but this was using radium, which is radioactive. Marie Curie found it, um, and radium water to cure. And at the, this was in the 1900s, early 1900s, and they believed it cured basically everything. <laughs> it was used to treat things from mental illness. It, they believed it could prevent aging. Um, the radium was also added to things like chocolates, toothpaste, contraceptives. Um, it was genuinely believed by medical practitioners that radium was an effective treatment for the majority of ailments. Um, and one of the things that they then started doing was using it as like a spa treatment um, in hot springs and the ancient spa town of Bath that's in Somerset began marketing itself as Britain's radium spa that's what name it gave itself and the spa which was richest in Britain in natural radium emanation and in doing so it saw a significant upturn in the numbers of people visiting the town uh, and radium water was on offer there for two pence a glass um oh my god yeah reliance on the water treatments and visits to spas dramatically declined in the 1940s and 50s right then people... died yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was because things like vaccines started to become more widespread so people were less ill in general and the nhs was introduced in 1948 uh with comprehensive range of health care so people were less willing to pay for a water cure um, and then the town of Bath, but the town of Bath around then still proudly proclaimed itself as being having radioactive water, like it was its selling point, uh, well into the 1950s. So it's not even that long ago, really, in the whole span of history and the things we've been looking at, really, until it was forced to change its practices rather dramatically following Britain's worst nuclear accident at Windscale, which is now Sellafield. Um, and over three days, in, in October 1957, there was a fire there. And because of that, everyone suddenly went, oh, no, radioactive, bad. I mean, it was bad for other reasons anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that suddenly caused this huge decline. And then Bath suddenly didn't call itself radioactive anymore. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> you know, it says it stops aging. Yeah, you'd stop aging you because you'd die. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, you'd there stop is... aging because you're dead. That's it. I, I don't know about any of you guys researching your facts, but basically, in the past, it would cure one thing pretty much by killing you. Like, it, would, yeah. it, would, it would cure you of your mental health illness, but you would be dead. So you would be cured, but you would also be dead. Um, or like near to death like you're yeah. ne- you're gonna die very soon yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm crazy that we live in the modern age <laughs> yeah literally well i feel like we're just not as ill anymore anyway like half the illnesses like some of the illnesses they're trying to cure with my facts is like a toothache and then they're like i'm just gonna make you bleed and then it'll cure the toothache or i'm gonna put a chicken on your face to ch- cure like, the plague or something like I'm gonna dip it's really you in random. Radium. <laughs> yeah like there's really random things they want to cure and they yeah. have, a lot of the time there was such uh, crossover as well between um doctors and sort of religion and exorcism yeah. and stuff like that that a lot of the really old stuff they believed that illnesses were caused by demons didn't they and sort of yeah. an imbalance of things in your body that weren't they're not actually real but they believed you know you, the demons or the devil was inside you and that's why you were in pain or that's why you'd gone crazy yeah um that's like any hysterical woman they were like you're obviously possessed by a demon yeah. there's nothing yeah. else like, you're, obviously no other option. Yeah. <laughs> you're obviously a witch we're gonna burn you as a stake there's no yeah. other reason for it yeah. if you if you sink then you were you were innocent but if you you're float, you're a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're um, an independent woman you're obviously a witch 
Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. What I think is quite interesting is that attitude revert like changed from it being like mysterious, mis- mystical, and um, re- religion, religionical, religion, religionical, <laughs> <laughs> religious, word. religious. That's the word. Yeah, that's um, the word you're looking for. It all changed in Queen Victoria's reign, and she um, she was a real fast uptaker of vaccines and was vaccinated against stuff herself, and that sort of set a precedent now. Well, if if the queen and the princess at the time were doing it then it's probably going to be all right mm. yeah well it's just, just like knows. a celebrity now if a celebrity is going to be doing something we should all be doing it yeah. really yeah. Right. she was the, the influencer to... the og influencer, yeah, the OG influencer. The OG. <laughs> <laughs> what if she I'll had go... a podcast <laughs> <laughs> i'll go on to my next flat uh fact about blood letters um which is basically um making you bleed to cure illnesses and it would cure every illness you can think of. of um yeah again at, in the Victorian times it used to be barbers that would be the blood letters. <laughs> so if you know like if you go to a barber shop now they might have the red and white like spinning thing above the barber shop. That's because it was also known as like because they were blood blood letters like we still use that now obviously they're not blood letters now hopefully not you, <laughs> you can't just go there for a shave and then just cut your neck like sweetie really Todd. like it's not that kind of thing anymore but yeah they literally used to make you just have like nosebleeds or like cut open your arm or something to cure any illnesses and release evil spirits that's what it used to all be about <laughs> oh my god Which is, it was pretty gross yeah they used Did to think mind? there was go could you imagine going to the barbers and be like, oh, yeah, I'll have a short back in size and also can you drain half my blood because I'm feeling yeah. a bit off? <laughs> feeling a bit <laughs> off, yeah, yeah, literally. It was like Victorians did it mostly, but then you'd also have like the ancient Egypts which used leeches, which we do also use now. Um, leeches mm-hmm. is still something that is used to bloodlet, but like obviously in a very more safe way. Than it's more just infectious kind of- it's, they they eat the infection, don't they, or yeah. something? Ugh. You don't just cut open the arm and like hope for the best. Yeah, <laughs> it's normally for like iron. Um, if you've got too much iron, um, then you'd use leeches and stuff. Mm. Like, it's not just to like get rid of some blood in your body. Um, but yeah, so, I thought that was a really weird fact. Yeah, like um, the Victorians seem to have done a lot of dabbling in some very odd things, didn't they? Like, Literally, all like... the time. They just wanted to cure everything and anything. They thought there was um. Four different types of things that were in your body. They'd think there was yellow bile, black bile, blood, and phlegm. Like they were the four things. And if they were out of sync with each other, that's when you become ill. So you'd need mm. to like re sync them up and like get one of them back. Drain up. it a bit and then. Yeah, drain a bit of blood. Yeah, get a bit of black bile in you. Uh, oh. I don't know what that would be. I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, that's what they thought the four things made up a human, a human body was like those four things well i think i can do a bit of explaining as to why the victorians are a bit gone off on one in all of this <laughs> yeah so uh, at the beginning of the 1800s morphine was used like for everything like you have a cough have a bit more morphine your child's talking have a bit more morphine um but because of that it caused an absolute huge pandemic of sorry trigger word of uh, opium addiction <laughs> in the world in, especially in britain everybody was addicted to opium because it is given to everything yeah um, and so doctors created a new wonder drug that had it was safer it had no side effects it wasn't addictive well you know um <laughs> and they didn't have any of those risks however what they created was heroin <laughs> so, <laughs> you know take from that what you will but they were all like on heroin for the entirety of that era i feel and we're going up with these <laughs> was in everything wasn't it yeah just yeah. everything had a bit of cocaine added to it yeah. like even in my house up. We've got um, old pharmacy bottles. My mum's a pharmacist. My great grandfather's pharmacist. And we've got like old pharmacy bottles all here. And like some of them's got like cocaine in them and stuff. Yeah. Like obviously, I thought you were going to say not opened it. Oh, I <laughs> what, thought you were well, you... that you've got cocaine in the back of your house. <laughs> no, just... but, but in the pharmacy bottles there are. Like, yeah. like it's still yeah. well, there. It's a really bad day. The police are going to be around <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was for medical use at the time. They've yeah. just been handed down to us. Um, but they're really cool. If you look at like the label of all the old medicines they'd use because obviously they'd mix them up in the pharmacy they wouldn't just like get a little pill um and it wouldn't be all like authorized yeah that's the right word yeah um but yeah we've got cocaine and stuff just involved not much <laughs> but yeah it's really cool 
Yeah, so what, so we'll make you numb from the pain of whatever's going on or we will kill you. These are the options that we've established so mm -hmm. far for medicine in the past. Well, you say in the past, though, that it's quite recent, the one in America where there's the opium pan... Uh, not pandemic that's right you know this <laughs> opium problem that's now come about in america because they started to prescribe it for everything again uh, and now there's a whole um a, a whole se section of people that would go in because they'd like fallen over and hurt their leg and then the doctors would be like oh okay have some opioids and yeah. now there's a huge opioids issue in America yeah. in certain places because they were just kept handing them out like sweets when someone was in pain. Yeah. I'm um, sure Lou Freed did a documentary about that recently, didn't they? Is fentanyl one of them that they give a lot out of? But that's mm. become quite a, quite a drug. <laughs> like, because like in America, can't like doc you can't you just become a doctor? Like you don't need loads of um, qualifications to have your own practice or anything. You can just have your own practice, I'm sure, because then there was just a documentary about one of these doctors who was just prescribing opioids that are like everything. Like mm. uh, yeah, maybe it's more deregulated over there, but it's, yeah. um, it's more the money side, isn't it? You, yeah, they, yeah. You, you get paid for it. They get paid yeah. by the medicine company to give the certain medicines out. Mm -hmm. They also get paid by you that is paying for the medicine. So they're getting like two streams of income. And yeah. if, you're, if, if there's this one thing they can get quite a lot of money from, and it's also addictive, so you're going to keep coming back for it. Yeah, yeah that's so why the... People are going to be like, yay. Yeah, <laughs> that's why the, um, the only driver for healthcare should be the benefit of the patient, not the profit. But, you know, Go we'll not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Good thing we have the NHS here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Praise the Lord for how long it's here. Yeah, we won't be prescribed opioids anytime soon. Like <laughs> yeah. Or just a too fake. Yeah. Um, I've got another fact. It's um, it's a fact from the mid nineteenth century. Um, I've never heard of it. A lot of these facts I've like heard of slightly, mm. but I, this is one I've never actually heard about, and it was really cool. To, not no, not cool in any way. It wasn't a good thing. It's called. <laughs> The whirling chair. So it's something they used to use it as a psychiatric treatment. So for like mental illnesses or anything, literally anything to do with your brain or a reason you'd go to like a lunatic asylum. Um, you could go to a lunatic asylum for literally anything. Like you could have been beaten up by your husband and you still go to a lunatic asylum. Like mm -hmm. it could have been anything. But yeah, the whirling chair was um, this chair that was strung up from the ceiling and you'd be strapped into it. And like literally the doctor would make you spin around as fast as you could. Oh my gosh. Like this is to like, if say it's like schizophrenia or something, it's as if you like spinning them round to shift up your brain again. Oh, okay. Oh, or like God. something like that. So like literally as you, the person who founded this was the grandfather of Charles Darwin. Oh. Like, which is so bizarre. Like Charles Darwin, obviously he was a brilliant man. But then his grandfather was me spinning psychiatric patients yeah. around in a room. Yeah, not but then, okay. No, but not only was he just spinning around to like shift their brain, it was also this uh, that theory of like we had four substances in our body to do with, like yellow bile, black bile, yeah. and blood. But he'd also like make them throw up or like just just get rid of everything in their body so they'd calm down as well. It's probably because they were so bloody like tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally because they were just throwing up every yeah. every orifice orifice they had they were just <laughs> coming out oh, of gosh, yeah. because they've been spun round so fast you know like when you go to a fairground round and those um spinning thing the I waltzes can't remember what the yeah the waltzes yeah. yeah just imagine that but like constant faster yeah, more sadistic <laughs> yeah and like the faster you go and they're like the more you look like you're hating it the better the doctor thought he was doing oh my god i, I think that's what's probably the scariest thing is they genuinely thought they were helping like that that was yeah. cutting edge science and they they thought that they were helping you get better but actually because yeah. you know back in that day that would have been a completely normal why would you even question it but now we're like what yeah <laughs> and i think that's pretty scary you know with they literally three friends in 20 30 100 years time will make a podcast about the medicines we'd use nowadays because we love i don't think we're using friends. anything too like crazy like spinning people around in a chair though I don't but think still... morally there's things that are wrong. Like those things morally you could now say they are not okay. But I don't think there's many things these days you could say there's a moral issue with, but probably like medically, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You know, like sarin using cocaine and stuff in medicine a hundred years ago is crazy to think of now. Yeah. We would probably in a hundred years think us using a certain type of painkiller now is crazy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but like we still perform like lobotomies on people to this day as like That's the last so resort crazy. treatment. Oh, do we? For, yeah. Yeah. For um, if you have epilepsy, it can be a last resort treatment or certain disorders. They can. Oh, it's the God. last treatment of last resort and it's not performed very often anymore, but it mm. is still performed. That is Obviously, crazy. it's not done under your under duress. You consent to no, it. No. Yeah. All of mm-hmm. it. And we have brain scans and know what we're doing. But it Whenever just, I think um, of lobotomy, did anyone like read One Flown Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Mm-hmm. For English? And Ratchet, if you watch that, they literally oh, have yeah. the scene where they lobotomize Oh my people. god, it's disgusting. Awful, isn't it? Worst and thing. He, and you just like nick drilling into the head. Oh, stop. Oh, oh god. god. I don't want to hear that. Have you watched <laughs> it, Elliot? Oh god, it's awful. I, I it's don't. It's so gruesome. Mm-hmm. I just, for the, for the viewers at home or listeners at home, I don't watch anything horror because I just can't cope with that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I have some more fun facts that okay, might bring the mood away. away. If we bring the mood away, mine are a bit more sort of light um, <laughs> topics. So I found a book called Mother's Remedies, over 1,000 tried and tested remedies from mothers of the United States and Canada. Um, and it's published in 1910. Uh, and it contains many remedies that have been phased out. Uh, and one of them was hay fever, a treatment for hay fever, Um, which was spraying 4% solution of cocaine up the nose. Um, And that was quite normal because, I mean, we've talked about it before. Cocaine was prescribed for things like indigestion, fatigue, eye pain. And anyway, I found out when I was looking into this, I kind of went down a deep hole of looking at this, this, um, this book. You can actually get it on Amazon. Uh, It's still around. I don't know if it's in print or it's, you know, old, books but you can get a kindle edition of it and everything (laughs) um but the comments on the page are unbelievable there are people genuinely buying this still looking for remedies to stuff even though the majority are ridiculous so (laughs) another one that there was in this book just from a bit more context if you had dry hands chapped hands um they said to pour sour cream into a cloth bury it outside overnight and then in the morning unearth it and apply the sour cream to your hands they and that was a genuine thing that was written in here and tried and tested and was believed what's but this the is, science behind that there, there cannot be any science it's just probably a, <laughs> i believe this works but this so was i a, need to write a book and make money let's yeah. just write some stuff down this was a review of the book though that i found on amazon that i just just made me laugh This book is really handy to have. This was written in 2016. This book is really handy to have because it's full of remedies that have been tried by mums and people. It may have just been the way my tablet's formatted, but it was a little hard to read because it's altogether like a story. At the time I bought it, I had a cold, so I was looking for cold remedies. Looking it over, it's full of all kinds of things and provide... It's full of all kinds of things, so you can see the chapters. Overall, I love this book, and I'm glad to have it in my collection. This book was published in 1910. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at information from over 100 years ago for a cold remedy? Yeah, she never heard of (laughs) Lemsip. Maybe she's wondering where could she get a Coke from just to snort her food. (laughs) Just to not question that. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, officer, the book told me to do it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, 1901 told me to do it. <laughs> Christ. Oh, yeah, there but that just made me laugh. There like must that. be some funny things in that book. Yeah. Um, they were the you only two I could it. find. <laughs> yeah, it was only like 60 something P on the Kindle, but everyone. Why didn't you buy it? <laughs> format, so everyone said it didn't format properly on the Kindle. Oh. And I was like, oh, it's not worth Damn. it. Not worth well, the formatting. If you'd like to go and read that book, go ahead. Yeah, if yeah, anyone wants to go that. buy that, read it on their Kindle and tell us what it says. Yeah. Enjoy. It'd be quite yeah. interesting to know what is actually in that book. Yeah. Um Yeah, so I, I don't know whether you guys noticed on your fact fact finding hunts, uh, but lots of like everyday items today were used for different purposes in their first situation, like Coca Cola was like cocaine in it and was used for something else mm-hmm. margarine uh, was actually used to grease tires in the war which is kind of yes disgusting. um but ketchup something that i didn't think could have another use except being absolutely disgusting um no <laughs> agreed no. i don't like it wrong thank you absolutely i mean wrong. there's the we wrong. need to have we need to have an instagram poll to determine how many people hate 
catch up because there's going to be two at least. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're leading the way. <laughs> yeah, more than half of this podcast hates it. So, <laughs> uh, so tomato ketchup was actually invented by a Dr. Bennett, and it was sold in a little pill, and it was marketed to cure pretty much everything. Basically, diarrhea, Just... indigestion, jaundice, rheumatism. I believe that. <laughs> I'm never ill and I, dr- I, I drink it I, drink <laughs> I don't ketchup. drink it I do not drink it <laughs> however this was all disproven obviously Tesney um, by people uh, like you well, well, <laughs> scientists. the scientist yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the only good thing that it is for which and I'm going to say that this is not my opinion is good for dipping chips into which it isn't but Oh my god, it so is. I could really do a massive bottle of chips and ketchup. <laughs> this has deviated quite quickly sorry, from sorry, historical Karen. medicine to sorry. ketchup. How <laughs> you brought ketchup up. I yeah. know. <laughs> you know I how much think I love it. Be so pas- passionate about it. You know I love ketchup. Uh, you know what a condiment I think could be a medicine? Would be something like horseradish. You know, yeah. if you if you have horseradish or wasabi, which tends to just be horseradish, yeah. you don't um, eat it by mistake. <laughs> and you eat it like you know. Sometimes I've had sushi and I've not realised a bit of wasabi stuck onto like the end bit, and I've like eaten it, and it's like you feel it go up your nose. It's like having one of those menthol sucky sweet yeah. things, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know. And I think that would probably work for a cold. That's the only <laughs> kind of condiment I genuinely believe would fix something. Yeah. God. Well, that's yeah, I I like I, yeah, I don't think there's any more condiments that would help in no, a cold. Well, sauce isn't helping anything, is it? <laughs> I mean, I would suggest. I mean, it cures a hangover. Pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, we need a disclaimer at the end of this and be like, we are not medical professionals. <laughs> We're really not. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you are slightly. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, but not like. These views are my own. Not, I'm not a pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, not like a pharmacist. <laughs> Not a pharmacist, people. Please don't listen to me. Um, do, you know, do you know some cure for hangovers? Yes. Two cure yeah. for hangovers. Okay. I've started to get those now. Well, I'm drinking some wine now, so maybe I need one of these cures tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but actually, I'd I'd die before I'd have to use one of these cures. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this was in. Um, oh no, I can't. I can't say that name. I don't know how to say that. Sorry, unfortunately, I can't tell you how where it's from. Because I can't say the name. Um, but a pickled sheep's eye can cure a hangover. You have to Wales. eat it for breakfast. No, it's not bre- It's not Wales. Yeah, eat it for breakfast when you've got the hangover and that will cure it. With Followed by a glass of tomato juice, very specifically with your pickled sheep's eye. So it's basically so, a um, Bloody Mary with a sheep's eye. With real blood. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Sounds so, like a yeah. bush took a trial. Yes, well, that it probably does. is, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. And the second cure um, for a hangover is tea made of poop and owl eggs. That's in the Wild West. And specifically, rabbit poo and owl Ugh. eggs. That's it. Not just not normal poo. Ugh. Owl eggs? Rabbit. Who the hell would you no, say? No, owl eggs. Eggs. Oh, right. <laughs> eggs. Oh, no. That says loads of really poor fair. owls with no legs left. <laughs> fair, either are a bit weird, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, egg drink I could understand, but as soon as you're adding poo to it, it's... <laughs> <a bit laughs> shit, that, isn't it, really? But then you, it's suggested drinking owl bottle. eggs mixed with wine for three days to get rid of the hangover. So you're also drinking wine three days after <laughs> your day. well, that, that one does work. That's, uh, That's that, like hair of the dog. Yeah. It is hair, hair of the dog. Of the dog. That is just slowly weaning yourself out of the hangover. That's not... <laughs> but making it even worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, so if you two, if we, you know, when we finally do go on a banging night out again. Oh my God, it's um, going to be the best night out. <laughs> and we all three inevitably have the worst hangovers ever in the morning. Why don't we? Each Which try of those a t- historical <laughs> um, hangover cure. Obviously, not ones like this, but I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, to say. Of, say bags and go to in the poo <laughs> with our leg. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there's so many of them, and I think we should each do one and then see who has the worst hangover. I don't, I, you know, I'm all for science, but this is going to get <laughs> freaky fast, and no, people no, might like hold us to ones. this. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but I will let everyone know I don't get hangovers, so I won't be able to participate yeah. it'll end Definitely. i tell you 
it will end. <laughs> and you'll get end? one that will kill you. <laughs> Hang over <laughs> yeah. the, the only way I'll kill myself is by hitting my head from fainting. That's the only yeah. way I'm gonna die. Yeah. Well I know and we all we have plenty of ways that we can probably stop you from fainting. We we have this chair that spins around really fast. Oh my god, I think <laughs> I'm going to imagine a hangover on that chair. I think that's actually how you're going to die. <laughs> that would be the worst. Like, you already feel like you're spinning. <laughs> like you're on that chair. Maybe if you could <laughs> manage to spin yourself the other way at a perfect speed, <laughs> you would just suddenly feel like a sense of, I'm, I'm fine. fine. <laughs> I'm just spinning around in the ceiling. <laughs> you're completely enlightened as you're spinning around because you're fine. <laughs> oh, God. I could see that working. You have this a good hang- hangover cure um, ritual, though, Taz. Oh, it's a very specific ritual, yeah. though. Um, so before I drink, I've got to also buy a can of full sugar coke. Not the full cans, you know, like those half thin cans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a half thin can of full sugar coke and full sugar Red Bull. I've got to drink the Red Bull to make me awake because it's got the caffeine in, and then I've got to drink the Coke for the sugar to then, I don't know, it works somehow. But yeah, that's how I get better, and then you eat something, and then that's fine. And then you eat the leftover pizza that you ordered at midnight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I forget that happens, because I, cause I just eat the pizza anyway, no matter what's happening. <laughs> but no matter what, whenever I've drank anything, I will then order domino's pizza don't yeah. matter how if it's even just when me, you say you're poor, not going to do it <laughs> yeah i'll still order 30 quids of domino's pizza and eat the whole thing myself it's quite <laughs> impressive to see everybody next time we can i'm going to take a photo and post it on instagram i'm actually Tesney's surprised pizza if you've hall. Ever... <laughs> yeah you can see the whole the thing with it is everyone can see how much pizza i have but i will not eat it with anyone i have to go sit in a dark room eating that pizza by myself <laughs> <laughs> You just get it. you just happened. get it from the door and you're like, see ya. <laughs> well, that's what happened with me and Elliot when we lived next to each other. Yeah. We brought pizza and I was like, Elliot, you're gonna have to go now, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I got I got a text at like I don't wanna make us sound really really boring, but like half past ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably saying, earlier. <laughs> yeah. And saying, Will you uh, will you share a pizza with me? And then when it I had to go and get it and then gave it to Tesney and then she was like, Right, well night then and that was it. <laughs> I basically meant, will you order the half, so I don't have to spend so much money, will you order pizza with me, go get it and deliver it to my door. That's basically what I meant by that. So I was used to what that was. <laughs> you enjoyed the pizza though. Well, that deviated a lot. <laughs> yeah, that really did. I don't know where we left off. To, you like, were talking about hangover stuff. cures, so it did fit in. Yeah, yes, thank God yeah. for that. Well, we'll look, I only had bit. two hangover cures and then my own one. I suggest if you're hungover, try my full sugar Coke and full sugar Red Bull after each other. I feel like it's like your body's crying and it's like, let's just mess it up even more and eventually it'll just go, (laughs) okay, I'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We're getting our time warning, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Five minutes ago. Does everyone know that we're doing this on Zoom? That's why we've only got 40 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're poor. Sorry, we're rather poor. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to censor that now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What is it? You're going to need a beep there, Rachel. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> redacted <Yeah. laughs> gonna be blurred out and everything um, right well that's it everybody I hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast today uh, you can catch us on our socials so our uh, Instagram is at particles plants and patients and our Twitter is at the three number P podcast uh, and you can find Tesney at um, on Instagram you find me at botanical babe with two E's um, and on Twitter Tesney Belgian underscore and you can find Rachel at? It's spelt Rachel, A-E-L, at the end, on both. And you can find me on Instagram at ElliotGriffiths98 and on Twitter at ElliotGriffiths98, where I've still got no followers. <laughs> um, please also subscribe to our YouTube channel because you get some bonus content of all oh, of the, the outtakes. Content. Oh, the bonus content. <laughs> there's a lot. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Just to get into this point, there's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, can you please find us on all of the podcast services, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the other ones, um, and <laughs> rate us because it really does help. And thank you so much for listening, guys. See you next time when we will discuss... 
what's conspiracy, it? conspiracy theory. theory. Yeah, conspiracy <laughs> theories. Yeah. Tess is going to really come into her own. I'm yeah. going to really enjoy that one. <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Bye.